pineal gland. Now, the pineal gland is a sort of rice to pea sized gland secret uh, which is located in between the two hemispheres of the brain uh, and it's responsible for a number of very important processes in your body and your brain um, not the least of which is the circadian rhythm and the regulation of your sleep hormones so melatonin serotonin uh, but also your you know your circadian rhythm and things like that now the very sort of widely debated topic is Firstly, what the pineal gland actually does and, you know, how it works. But secondly, the idea that by uh, being subjected or, you know, ingesting fluoride, which is contained in water, most toothpastes and various other things, that you're actually calcifying the pineal gland, meaning that you're, you're making it less effective and sort of subdued. What the research seems to suggest is that yes, by ingesting fluoride, which is a, a neurotoxin, you know, a toxin that's damaging to the brain, you calcify the pineal gland over time. And what that means is that by, for example, if you use fluoride toothpaste day and night, if you ingest water that is uh, that contains fluoride, what happens is over time, the uh, pineal gland becomes calcified and phosphate crystals start forming around and on the pineal gland. It can interfere with your dreams. It can make dreaming, you know, difficult. So we've got this thing, the pineal gland, um, and you know, most of us have it calcified by phosphate crystals, meaning that most of us don't experience the profound dreams uh, and sort of very um, life-changing almost dreams that you can get when the pineal gland is not calcified and when it's actually active and working properly. Um, so, you know, as I said, there are a number of ways you can decalcify the gland. I'm not going to, in this video, go into, you know, too much about the pineal gland and how it works. But really, I just wanted to introduce you to the idea that the pineal gland can do a number of things. Firstly, with regards to lucid dreaming, it can give you very profound and vivid dreams, more likely to become lucid. Okay, now just please excuse my the quality of this video. I'm just getting used to using my graphics tablet again. So uh, as I you know get used to writing at the same time as talking, the videos will improve. One of the things that we're going to be talking about very quickly in this video is how you can decalcify the pineal gland, meaning how you can get it to be working as it should do, working normally, and actually helping you with your processes. You know, it can help you dream better. It can help you think better. Um, and really, a lot of the effects of the pineal gland or the benefits they sort of remain shrouded in a bit of mystery because we haven't really done that much research into it. All we know is that naturally the pineal gland does sort of help us keep in tune with nature. It helps us uh, form sort of an alliance between our minds and our bodies and it sort of promotes a synergistic um, approach, right? It makes you feel more in tune with nature and your body. So here's some basic ways that you can decalcify your pineal gland. Number one, filter your water. So when you, for example, if you have um, a normal shower and tap system, the chances are that there's no filter included in it. It just sort of gives you tap water from the, you know, from the default source, which normally contains fluoride. So there are a number of ways that you can, you can get filters for these. You can either install them yourself or you can have someone come and fit them. Um, all you want to make sure is that the filter that you have on your tap. It's normally like a screw on sort of uh, sort of blob thing that you can put on the bottom of your of the actual tap. Um, and it looks something like this. So say if this is the tap here and the water comes out this bit. Basic drawing I know, but it's sort of like a little uh, attachment that goes in this area here and it just filters the water as it comes through. You can, if you want to spend a bit more money and get it a little bit more sort of a uh, higher quality of, of, of filtration, you can actually get a filter that works on the pipe level. So it will actually filter the water before it even enters the tap. Um, and it's slightly bigger and it involves a bit more plumbing work here. Um, but that's an option if you would like to do that. So the second thing is toothpaste. Now a lot of dentists, uh, for one reason or another, will recommend fluoride heavy toothpaste. They'll say it promotes qualities such as remineralization of the teeth, that it prevents the tooth decay and all this sort of stuff. There's not really been any hard evidence to suggest that it does. And the link between 
not, uh, you know, fluoride toothpaste and improved teeth or better resistance to tooth decay is weak to none. You know, if there is any, if there is any research, I would encourage you to leave it in the comments because I haven't seen it. So they claim this for one reason or another. The fact is there is no metabolic process in the body that requires fluoride. Uh, in fact, it's been improving neurotoxin and it's damaging to almost every part of you. So you don't need fluoride in your toothpaste. Toothpaste is the, probably a second to water, the second worst way and the highest uh, threat really to us through fluoride ingestion because we do it every day. Uh, and we're encouraged from a young age to use very heavy, heavy uh, fluoride content toothpaste uh, twice, three times a day, even as kids. And this can be dangerous. So the number one thing that you should do with toothpaste is just get a fluoride-free toothpaste. There are many out there, uh, and in most cases, they're actually cheaper than normal toothpaste anyway. And then three, there's the sort of holistic approach that you can take where you uh, eat more raw, raw plant-based organic foods. Um, obviously, I myself am a vegan, but you know you don't have to go completely that extreme. Um, you can get a healthy diet just by avoiding things like lots of highly processed and sugary foods, avoiding sugary drinks and that sort of stuff, and you're just going to limit your fluoride intake that way. That's really it, guys. I would encourage you to leave a comment saying you know what you think about this, your opinion, um, and if you have had any experience with uh, decalcifying. Uh, or utilizing your pineal gland slightly more. Um, I'd love to hear how you guys are getting on. And that's it. See you next time.